been joined via Skype by former health minister and also the uh, boss at the International Relations Department of the NDC. He is also a member of the NDC's um, COVID-19 team. Mr. Alex Sebefia is on Skype. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to your viewers and to your panelists mm. today. <laughs> Day one of uh, partial lockdown. How are you coping? Well, um... Uh, uh, I believe that it's going to give me a lot of needed time to catch up on a lot of paperwork that has uh, uh, accumulated because of the work we've been doing over the last, say, four weeks. Mm. Um, and But we're still in communication, like I'm still talking to you now um, on TV3. Mm. Um, and also to just give you time to reflect and think and see how best you can uh, run ideas around to help uh, us come out of this mm. uh, unfortunate pandemic. How do you view the government's uh, decision to do this lockdown over the next two weeks? Good, bad? Well, there is no easy decision in circumstances like this. And uh, the, uh, there are always going to be areas which will uh, create some difficulty. One, as to the lockdown, it was necessary to have a lockdown. The way and manner you go about the lockdown was always going to be the issue. Okay, what, what's and the difficulty the, here? Well, the difficulty is I don't know whether sufficient preparation was made for people who were going to leave the areas which had been locked down. Mm. So, namely Accra and Kumasi. And so you would, as has been said, you're going to find a lot of people who left these cities um, the, uh, very quickly at short notice without any form of testing mm. uh, and going into areas. And if you're not careful, you can then have a situation where the spread becomes more, it's, it's exactly going to be like what happened with the plane that the, the, the people who came off a plane, okay. and they decided to mass testing of all of them. Mm. And out of the 1,030, you found that 78 of them, I believe, right. were. So if you're, the, the way this lockdown is happening, as mm. you're sending people out, if there is no way of testing these people, and even 10% or 5% of them mm. have this disease, they're going to be taking them to places which never had it. Hmm. Interesting. So now we, we have been locked down uh, partially. Exempted groups are out there working. What, what would you advise if you were in the seat for citizens, many of who um, live below the, the minimum wage net, those who are using public toilet, they say they have to justify and all of that. What would be your advice to, to these people? There's a piece of advice I've been given uh, from day one or from when we started discussing this issue. And I, I would hope government would announce it and concentrate its efforts there. Mm. And that is for the use of masks. Okay. I think everybody must wear a mask. Now, the... Well, but, uh, but we do understand that the, the, the mask is only worn by people who are infected or affected. So if you're asking everybody to wear, that suggests that we all have it now, don't we? Well, let me put it this way to you. Have you been tested? Not, not, not really. So how do you know whether you have it or not? So the point I'm making is simple. Mm, mm. We should assume everybody has it. Okay. If you assume that and everybody is wearing a mask, two things happen. It is more difficult to transmit it to somebody who is wearing a mask. But even if you 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 take that aside, if you are wearing a mask and you have it, you can't mm. it, you can't transmit it because you're coughing, you are talking into the mask, and everything goes into the mask. That sounds so, that sounds ideal, but is it realistic? It is realistic. It is really, it's been done in other countries, and part of the reason why Wuhan and, and, and uh, other countries are not suffering that much is that some of the, uh, uh, one of the biggest things they have done is to wear masks. Then my view is that so long as you're not on your own, if you have it, we all get into the habit, let's spend the money on the mask, get into the habit of putting on the mask and walking, uh, you're going to work because you're a special, mm -hmm. you're an essential service, you're on a bus, you wear a mask, you're on trotro, you wear a mask, you have it, you can't transmit it. Okay. And so you immediately stem the flow. And I think that this is one action that has not yet been taken. And it's one that if we are able to implement, will slow down the transmission of this offense. Where, so where are the marks? That's the question, the next question that where, comes up. Where are the uh, isolation centers? Where are the... Um, uh, 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 where's the machinery and the drugs that are needed to treat people? 
do we have enough chloroquine? We don't have, as a, a country, everything mm. that is needed. But if we make a conscientious effort to channel our efforts in a particular direction, within a space of time, we will get it. Mm. There's no point in just sitting down and throwing your hands up in the air in exasperation. No. What we need to do is say, okay, look, we're doing all these things. They are helping. Mm. But if we do this as well, it will help. So while we are getting PPEs, while we are... For me, gloves are actually not that much useful. But okay. if it gives people comfort, fine. But the mask is a different ballgame. Even people recommend that homemade masks mm. are good because the only thing you're trying to do is to stop whatever droplets are coming from your mouth or, or whether you cough, anything comes out. Mm. You can't spread it. And if I can't spread it, fine. The only time you do not really need masks is if you're doing mass testing. Mm. Because if you're doing mass testing, then it means that people know whether they have it or not. We, do, we are not in that situation yet. They, they, the, mask are, they, the Ghana Health Service has announced that there will be uh, mandatory testing in the lockdown areas. That should be gratifying to you, shouldn't it? Yes. I, I, I think that if you lock people down and sit down and do nothing, it mm. doesn't help anybody. The WHO has put down quite a few uh, um, recommendations mm. that if you do lockdown, you must do these things as well. Okay. One of which is you must get enough test kits to test uh, people and be able to then get a good idea of how many people are actually... Uh, uh, what's it called, have it or don't have it. Mm. In communal areas, uh, it becomes very difficult. If one person gets it in a, a compound house, mm. you're likely to make have a situation where everybody is going to get it. Mm. But you could stem the flow if you gave a rule that, look, if you're in a compound house or you're in any environment, everybody should wear a mask. Hmm. Whether you are. And that can be done by everybody once you're able to import, people are able to sew. Anything that covers your nose and your mouth, it's uncomfortable. Mm. It's not... Yes, you have to get used to it. I'm, uh, I remember I watched recently a surgeon saying, now you know how surgeons uh, find it difficult because <laughs> they have to work right through and hold right, the whole right. But no, we are in a crisis. And, mm. and when you're in a crisis, you have to take measures that can help. And for me, that is one area amongst all the other measures mm. that are going on that should be done. So, for example, if we were all wearing masks, all those who were traveling would actually not transmit it on the buses that they were traveling on. Okay. And when they get to the other end, they should have been, you see, you may have stopped people from doing what they were doing if you had mentioned the word quarantine, uh, if you had, if you traveled. Okay. So if the government had said, well, okay, I'm going to let you uh, allow you to travel, but there should be self-quarantine mm. when you get to the other end. Or for that matter, there should be government quarantine. So if you get off a bus, you do put you in a particular hotel, but people go to villages and whatnot. Mm. The easiest, even though not the easiest, the easiest thing to say, but more difficult to implement, would have been to have a lockdown in Accra immediate in terms of I'm locking you down, but you can't move. Okay. In other words, you will still be able to move as freely as well to get food stuff and stuff which people were doing. But you can't leave Accra. But but but, but, that, but that would be unfair. That would, that would be unfair because there are those who have come from other parts of the country into Accra to transact business and they needed to return, don't you think? Yes. So you give less time for that. So you give them, if you're leaving Accra within the next 24 hours, if you haven't left, you must stay in Accra. Mm. So they should have, we had 48 hours. But you see, there's no right answer. The, uh, there is no right answer in this matter. Mm. So once there is no right answer, then you take into account what are the things that I could do. So I don't believe in an immediate lockdown. Okay. But I believe that you should have given less time to allow people to leave, which would have meant that some people... Now, when you add on top of that, the fact that if you get to your uh, another city, so you got to, say, Takradi, you got to Obwasi, right. you got to this thing, you knew that you had to do a mandatory two weeks quarantine. Mm. You might say, well, I might as well stay in Accra if I can afford it. For the Kayas and others, it becomes more difficult because okay. they need subsistence living. They mm. need to move. So mm. I understand that as well. But these are just ideas that we are throwing out. Okay. And that is why I believe that the committee that has been set up by uh, the NDC is a useful one because we are also thinking things through and throwing these ideas at government it, to see how better it assist us. Is it your opinion or the opinion of the committee, the NDC's committee, that there perhaps are too many exempted groups who are out there working, and that could increase our chances of many people contracting the COVID-19? Not if you add gloves to it. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, masks. Masks to because it. These are essential services, and you can't... 
lock down the whole system uh, at this stage is the is the view. Uh, what the word word being used by some, and uh, and I use shy away from it is total lockdown, where nobody moves, nothing. We we haven't got to that stage, and but lockdown, yes. Mm. And the question is, when the president announced it, he did mm. not define it. Okay. But in fact, what has then now been defined by Kujo Bong Nkrumah mm. is that they are looking at some form of uh, <coughs> for these people. And if your name is not on a particular list, okay. then you are not exempt. So it's the communication. Even though they are exempt, they should, give, they should have come out more earlier. Or mm. earlier. I mean, Kujo has done it now. But explain who these exempted people are okay. and how many. Some banks are going to open, but they are not going to open all their branches, is my right. understanding. Right. So th there's that this thing. But without the, the for me, and I'm, I'm no authority, I mm -hmm. mean, they, they are those counter, but without the mask, then if people are still meeting, and till such time that the mask testing takes effect, uh, then it becomes uh, an issue. But let's, let me put down a caveat. Okay. If your mask testing, if the test me today, Mm. and I'm fine, and I meet somebody tomorrow who's got it, I'll still get it, and I already have been tested. But the, 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 the responsibility lies on your shoulders, not on that of government alone, don't you think? So wear a mask and stay home. The question always comes back, are the masks available? Jack Ma has given us 20,000 of those. Government has ordered 50,000. We have 10,000 already. That's all we have, are really. We in, are we making an effort to put the emphasis on the mask or not? That's the question. The president met and captains of industry. He told them to look internally and produce. You, why? The point I'm making is that you can have homemade mask. The important thing is to cover your nose and your mouth. That is the essence. So people can sit down, uh, people can sew, uh, tailors can all be commandeered, do a hundred a day. It's not that complex. If you even go on the internet, people show you what can be done. Different colors, different fabric. So long as it's thick enough to hold, uh, uh, we won't allow uh, uh, droplets to mm. move out from through it. So it's not a thin piece of material. I'm not saying do it so thick that you mm. can't even breathe. Mm. No, uh, but homemade masks can be used. So government procures, private companies procure, but at the same time, we have a situation where you are uh, doing uh, internally your mm. this thing. But you're coupling that with staying at home. Okay. It's a good policy. So once it's only a few people who will be out. Right. But if you have to go into work, what is your protection? And the, the view is wear masks, do all the other things that are doing. And there are difficulties, as I said, with the migration. We okay. now have to start monitoring the people mm -hmm. in the rural areas because some people would have transmitted it. Alex, I thank you very much for your time this morning. Grateful. Thank you very much. Chris. And that's uh, Alex Sebefia. He's a former health minister. He's also the uh, boss of the International Relations Desk at the NDC and also a member of the NDC's committee on COVID-19. Essential thing is for you to wash your hands with soap and under running water, eat healthy. Uh, your vitamin C should be close by. If you have fruits like mango, orange, pineapple, or um, tangerine and lemon and lime, eat them and stay fit and stay at home if you have no business outside.